Welcome back to the channel guys. Today we're looking at the Axis Flying Manta 5 SE. This one's a walk snail build. As always, I'm Jeff with Titan FPV. Let's dive in. First order of business guys, if you're not yet subscribed, please do so. Click that notification bell and you'll be notified when I upload content like this and all others to the channel. So you guys have been requesting it. I've got the build complete. I did a review. If you haven't seen it, I'll post it up here in the upper right hand corner. I've already done a review of the frame, the Axis Flying Manta 5 SE. And I put together a build and I just wanted to show you guys what components I used and give you some flat footage and uh, give you my overall view of the frame once I've been flying it for a couple months or a month or so here. So without further delay, let's dive in, see what components I use. This is the SE model. Now they did just drop a DC, a dead cat version of this frame. I'm thinking about picking that one up. As I stated earlier, I picked up a Moonlight VTX. I wanted to use a dead cat frame so I get props out of view. This one does have props in view. This one is a Truex frame. The Truex geometry. For the camera, this is the walk snail. Uh, it's the micro, it's the V1 camera. It does 1080p. For the VTX, you can see it's tucked in here. This is the V1 VTX as well. If you're asking why I didn't go with the V2 uh, or the Pro model, I picked this one up when I picked up the VRX and uh, that's just the components that I had. So this is the first build I put together. I don't think there's a whole lot of difference uh, other than the pro camera is much better in low light, but this one will also do 1200 uh, milliwatts with the uh, FCC hack, uh, but by default it'll go up to 700 milliwatts. For the stack here, I'm running the Speedy V F7 stack. Now this is a experimental ESC, so look forward to this one coming out soon. It's running AM32 uh, instead of uh, BL Heli32 because it's outdated and uh, it's no longer supported. So they're trying. We're trying out this new firmware. I'll go about. I'll explain that in a minute. I believe it's a 50 amp ESC or 55 amp ESC. This one doesn't have the heat sink, but you can pick up a comparable stack. But it may, it may be still running BL Heli32. I don't know at the time of this video, but I'll update that for you. You do have TPU prints that come with this frame. So you have the feet. Now this is a custom antenna mount. I'm gonna go ahead and link this one. I'm gonna upload it to probably printables and Thingiverse. But I couldn't find a good mount, and I give credit to the user. He reached out to Axis Flying and got all the CAD files for the TPU parts. I'm going to post that link also in the video description. So if you want to print the stack guards, the bumpers, or whatever, if you want to print it in a you know a color of your choice, like maybe you want to go with all blue because the frame has this blue carbon look to it. I've been getting pretty good reception out of this. This is like I said my. It's my second walk snail build, but my first five inch build. We are running Express LRS. This is the Jumper Ion Nano up receiver. It's running Express LRS 3.4, I believe, 4.3, the most current release at the time of this video. We've got an XT60 connection here. I do have a capacitor. I don't remember the specs off the top of my head, but it is a large capacitor there if you can see it, but it is 6S capable to prevent any uh, video noise. The camera is soft mounted. They have these uh, TPU, excuse me, they have these uh, rubber for the mount. I think they do also include, if you're just running a typical micro camera, a single TPU print, but you can also print these out if these aren't to your liking. Plenty of room in this frame. Uh, it also does include a buzzer. So that's a nice addition. A little bit louder than the ESC tones for, uh, for a beeper. So the top plate. Looks like it's two millimeters. 
Bottom plate looks to be three and a half millimeters. These aren't the big boy chunky arms, but they're pretty thick. Let's see. The arm thickness is five and a half millimeters. You do have this nice aluminum, blue aluminum cage. These are uh, 20 millimeter standoffs, so it is slammed. It is a, a dual deck design here. So the VTX sled, uh, it does fit up or it does is a little bit higher raised than the uh, the bottom plate here. It's pretty simple to remove these arms. You just remove these uh, two bolts and slide the arm off if you were to break one. You do have mounting for the VTX here in the back. You have a 25 by 25 whoop mounting as well as a 20 by 20 mounting as well. I do have these standoffs to allow some cooling for the walk snail VTX. Uh, it does come with this rubber pad. You get two of these battery pads. They're not the super sticky ones, but they get the job done. It's a solid frame. They really have but a couple crashes over grass. I think I had a desync. It's probably due to the uh, test ESC firmware. The tune, I'm just running as usual. The UAV Tech preset for the 5 inch. Now, I did have to dial it back. I think the master multiplier is at 1.6. I dialed it back to 1.25. I had to dial it back a little bit. So I don't know if that's due to this ESC firmware, but I mean, the rest of the components, typically I just leave it the defaults and it's fine. I am running uh, Betaflight 4.5. I think the latest release on this one. This frame does come with two battery straps. I did primarily fly a couple different size uh, packs. This China Hobby Line 1300 milliamp hour, which is an oldie but goodie. Also, I ran these GNB 1250 Moz uh, 6S. Uh, we're running 6S motors. I did forget to mention that. These motors are the iFlight Zing E Pro 2208, uh, 1800 kV. I think I am running at these 100% uh, motor output. I was having some issues with um, high throttle oscillations, motor output limit, but after I uh, drug the slider down a little bit, uh, I didn't really have that issue. It's still not perfect. It'd just be my build. Could be these motors. They're not. They're not really overpowered for a five inch. But uh, these are large motors. Like I typically go with a twenty three oh six or a twenty two oh seven motor. These are a twenty two oh eight, so even a millimeter taller. They got plenty of power if you want to run an action camera, which. I mean, walk smell does uh, 1080p, but typically I fly it in high frame rate mode, which is uh, 720p, 100 FPS. I didn't use the wire guards. I just ran some zip ties. Typically I use some of the Emacs tape, but I don't know why I didn't this time. I did run the uh, wires over the uh, ESC. I know that causes noise, but I just went the easy route this time and wired it up directly. These props are the Ethics PB and J's. I think they're a 3.1 inch pitch on a 5.1 inch prop. Now these aren't the only props that I was running. I did run these J37. I think these are 4.9 inch prop. These are typically, I like a lower pitch prop with um, 6S. Seems to work well for me. So what do you guys run? Post down in the comments. Uh, do you like a higher pitch or do you like a higher KV motor? These 1800s, I think, are pretty good uh, balance. Anywhere from 1750 to 1900, I think, is pretty good. All right, we're in grams now. 411 grams dry weight with the 1250 it's 636 1300 645 we know those china hobby lines are heavy 
And you can add what, I fly the action too, so maybe another 70 grams. Depends on what camera you're running. It is readily available. I mean, uh, I'm in the US, all the local retailers like Pyro, Race Day Quads. I got this one on AliExpress, I think for $26. You can also find these on Amazon. Probably gonna pick up the dead cat version. I'm just waiting for it to be released. I know they have a bind and fly, so, but uh, I'll do a build there just to run that Moonlight VTX. So what else do you guys wanna see coming to the channel? You have any requests? I do have some analog video content coming up. I don't know if anybody still flies analog, but I do in 2025. I'll cut to the flight footage here. You can take a look. And I uh, want to thank you again for tuning in. As always, guys, I couldn't do it without you. Stay tuned, and uh, we'll catch you in the next one.